So one of the things I get asked a lot is how do you actually have a search feature that goes off of multiple different models? Let's say you have a post model, you have a profile model, and you want to be able to search both of those things at the same time. Well, we can do this using a tool called Iter Tools. It's a package built in Python that allows us to literally chain together query sets. And what it does is it turns it into a brand new list of individual instances of those query sets. So it kind of takes multiple lists, in this case, a query set, and turns it into one. Now, if this is confusing or you lost about this in any way, this is definitely not for you. But if you're with me, let's go ahead and take a look at the code just on a basic level. So this is the code and this is what we're gonna actually be working with on this one. Um, and it's really simple as you see here. We have multiple query sets and with those query sets, we then chain them together. And then we use Python's sorted method to reorder them if we want to. Now I do recommend that you do order them because it makes sense when you're searching something to have a little bit better relevance. And even based off of just the primary key, it will allow you to show the most recent ones first because often that might be the most relevant. It's not always the most relevant, but for the purposes of this video, that's how we're going to treat it. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the blog post and actually work through the code. So now in the post, um, you probably already know this, that we are assuming a few things about what you have already done. One of those things is you already have a project, you have some familiarity with Django, and perhaps you watched the Try Django series or one of them, and or you created the blank Django project from this post. Now, that's what we're working off of, working off of this post with some of our own code that kind of diverts from that. So let's go ahead and just take a look. Now, these model examples are fairly straightforward. You've probably seen them before, you've probably worked with them before. In fact, you've probably even do, done simple searches, AKA simple lookups inside of this, right? You've probably seen this, hopefully you have. If you haven't, what it's really doing is it's just looking in the database for things that match that filter, right? So in this case, the published date is less than or equal to now and the title contains Django. Well, let's see this in action, right? If I jump into the shell and I import these things, just a real quick import, what I'll see is a query set come back. Okay, and if I hit query set, I see that there's one object. Now, if I did post.objects.all, I see that I have multiple objects. What this is showing me is, yeah, it actually filters things down based off of some parameters. Now, in my case, I have it where it's really simple. I have some sort of published date and then a title containing the string Django. Now, if I wanted to do this across multiple models, that's where it gets a little bit complicated specifically for a search. So before I actually even bring it into multiple models, what I wanna do is look at the advanced query lookup or the Q lookup, if you're familiar with it. So let's go ahead and import Q. And I still have all those other things imported. This time I'm gonna actually use the query of Django. And I'm actually gonna set my Q lookup first. All right, so this is my Q lookup, and it has parentheses on either side. But then on the inside, this is the actual filter that we're gonna be doing, similar to what we saw before with this title. Um, but I've changed the string to being a variable, so I can just use variables here. This is important for later, of course, because we wanna be able to reuse this as much as possible. So this is called an or lookup, meaning it's going to get all of the posts or all of the objects that match this or, because of this line, or this. And using this lookup, we can change how our filter works. So I can just do post.objects.filter based off of that or lookup. And I hit enter, and there you go. Now it's giving me this or lookup. Now granted, it's not taking into account the publish date or some of those other things, um, but that's kind of up to you on how you want that part to work. It's much more about, hey, look, I can now search across two fields to look for that query and whether or not it matches. Boom, that's called a 
more advanced search than what we just did. That's why queue lookups are really cool. Now there are also and lookups where you combine it, where it has to be in one field and the other. Um, and I'll let you play around with that. That's not really relevant for what we're doing here. So that's doing lookups. Now, how do we actually associate this to our model itself? Well, of course, that's by creating a model manager. Now, model managers do all sorts of things and they have a bunch of them already built in. So jumping into the post model, I'm gonna just bring in that code here for the model manager and then just adapt the model itself by saying objects equal to that post manager. Okay, so what's happening here is I'm just extending the built-in model manager. And when I say built-in model manager, we just used it. And that is post.objects.filter. The filter part is the model manager. Um, also, all is also a model manager. So it allows us to do a little bit more robust things. Now, something that's not in the blog post that you could go a little bit further is do a query set or a custom query set call it post query set and do models dot query set and then bring this up there. So let's go ahead and cut that out. And instead of doing self dot query set like that, we would just say self. So QS is equal to self, whatever that query set is. And then down here, we would just go ahead and do define get query set self. And we're going to return that query set. Now, this is important for building a reusable search. Now, I'm not gonna actually get into too much detail here, but all I did was allow this to be searched on all sorts of things. So now what we can do is, if I exit out of the shell and re-enter the shell, and then re-enter that post model here, I can do a couple things. One of them saying query set equals to post.objects dot filter and we can do that publish date thing i'm gonna have to import that time zone so let's go ahead and have an error happen and django dot utils import time zone and let's try that again with that search by pressing up and now on that query set i can do dot search and just say the query equaling to django I hit enter, there is my refined query set. Um, and if I change it to something weird, it's not gonna give me back a result. Cool. So a little bit more advanced and going outside the context of the post, sometimes that's why it's good to watch the videos. So now let's bring this into a search view and how we're gonna go about doing this is by augmenting a list view. And we want a list view for a specific reason. But before I actually jump into what the blog post does, we're just gonna use this basic thing that we've been doing, which is that post model itself. We're gonna do it with one model first, and then I'll show you generally how you do it with multiple. I'm also gonna add in search back into the model manager with a query of none. And all it's gonna do is return self.get query set search and query equals to query. Now this right here is calling this right here. Okay, so jumping in to our search view in the search module dot views, um, I have my post model already in here and I have some of the code already figured out for me. And so um, now that I have a model manager specifically for my post query search, I can say if query is not none, then I can return post.objects.search query equals to query. So this is now doing that search. Of course, this is more of like calling this a post search view, not a general search view, but nevertheless, it is doing that search, except it's just on one actual model. So let's go ahead and import those other models. We'll do from courses.models import lesson and from profiles.models import profile. And now I can start building this in. We'll say post results equals to that search. And then we can do lesson results equals to the same thing. 
and so on, right? So um, now back into our blog post, if we search down a little bit more, um, we see the intertools. So we see these things right here, right? I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste them. Uh, basically from if query not none, whole thing. So from here to here, um, there's our inner tools. So let's go ahead and do those imports. So from enter tools, import chain. Okay. Um, now we have our search view and the inner tools right here turns all of those searches into one big search. There's our multiple model search, just like that. And of course, my other models, they are identical with some variation to that initial one that we did. Like even the model itself is pretty much the same uh, with the exception of the profile has one user basically. Uh, but really uh, the search view itself is now contained and now actually works for us. So the next thing is to build a template tag. I'll explain this in a second. So template tags and then an init file here. And then finally, we are gonna call it get class.py. Okay, so inside of there, or rather, let's call this rename to class name, as we said in the blog post. And in there, we'll go ahead and paste this in. And all this is doing is returning back the name of any given class. Now this part is important for the view itself. So let's go ahead and copy the code on the template and come in here inside of my search view. I'm gonna go ahead and paste this in and we'll save that. And now I can actually do a search on my project. And I'm getting an error called enter tools. Have I been saying enter tools this whole time? Yeah, I definitely meant iter tools. So like iteration tools. Duh. Okay, so back to that. Now that that's working, let's go back into our search. And we got a little syntax error, something with copying and pasting onto the blog post itself. And we refresh. So we don't have any search results. So let's just do a quick search and I'll just say title, uh, nothing. If I search for Django, hit enter, I get two results for Django. Um, if I search CFE, I get my CFE user, right? So it says lesson item and so on. So, so like the actual search part beyond this has not been implemented. Um, but the main thing here is we now have a search view with multiple items. So biggest question here now, um, is this particularly efficient? Yes or no. The next question is, should we be using a filter called class name? And then finally, um, we've repeated ourselves multiple times in some of these lookups, or at least how these methods are run. Is that a really good way to do it? Okay, and the thing that we really didn't talk a whole lot about was this sorted method. This has a key of Lambda. So this is what this is doing is sorting all of those query sets by our primary key and then reversing them. So that means they're the reverse primary key. So if I search Django here, I see that part two comes up first and the, the second one comes up after that. Of course, if I look at my admin, I'll see that's the order of them, right? So this is primary key of one, this is primary key of two, and the order that my search is giving me is the reverse of that. It's giving me the same as the admin, but if I wanted them from one to you know a million or whatever, I would just change that and that's how it do. So this part is actually really interesting. It means that I can run a method from the instance to figure out how I wanna sort this. Just a little teaser here, we can do something, and this is part of the challenge that I wanna leave you with. We could do something inside of this method. Let's say for instance, if I added property and I added an instance method here called rank and I return some sort of value, um, perhaps this is a way that I can have my search results being a little bit more relevant. Perhaps it's one way, perhaps it's the only way. That has yet to be seen. 
So that's it for this one. If you want to be a little bit more challenged, check out what we wrote in that blog post to see if you can go the next step of making this search feature a lot better. Um, I also want to hear from you. Did you enjoy this video in a, a little bit smaller of a form where we really just focused on one thing and we had some relevant blog post for it? If you really like this kind of thing, please let us know in the comments below and let us know what else you want to see because there's just so much that we can cover. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you.